Hi, I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and today I'm in the mood to recreate a classic video with a little bit of a twist. Uh, before I get into that twist, uh, right here I have a homemade blank of some worsted weight wool yarn that I made on my Loops and Threads knitting machine. And our goal today is to create a gradient of a broken violet colorway. And again, the twist will be coming in a little bit. I am going to pre-soak this circular blank in some plain tap water for 30 minutes. In our dye bath, we have 10 cups of water and I am adding one tablespoon of white vinegar. To start with some low acid, give us a lot of contrast in our yarn. Because this is my favorite proportion, I am going to add a half teaspoon of the Wilton Violet food coloring to some warm tap water to just get it dissolved. And then we will add this to the pot immediately before we are ready to start dip dyeing. It has been a little while since I've done this, so fingers crossed that I don't dip too fast or too slow. But let's give it a go. So here is our Wilton's Violet into the pot. And I've now got the pre-soaked sock blank. And we're gonna start dipping. Ha ha. And I'm seeing something cool, but I don't know if you guys are seeing something cool yet. Doesn't necessarily look smooth, does it? Um, I'm seeing that we're getting our dips, but gee, take a closer look as this is going in. Do you guys notice our twist yet? The yarn I'm doing today is actually a discontinued yarn from Wool to Die For. And it's one that has both superwash and non-superwash yarn in it. So I am really, really excited to play with this and see sort of like the kind of twist that we can end up with. Um, so we're now at like those pretty blues. I wonder, hmm, I might have gone a little, a little fast. Um, there might still be some pinks towards that end, but I am really excited. Let me zoom in for you. There, in this top portion, you can kind of see the twist in that I think that our superwash yarn has started to absorb some blue, whereas the 100% wool has not quite started to absorb the blues yet. The acid concentration might be a little too low for it to get all of that, but you can see Ugh, this is going to look so, so cool when we unravel it. Um, I'm going to go ahead and give this, I think, five minutes before we add some more vinegar to help the rest of this color absorb. But, oh yeah, I am so excited. Eek, I'm so excited. And, ooh, that's looking, like, really red. You can really see the difference and... Like, I think a lot of the superwash has absorbed a lot of the blue already, giving us these barber poles throughout. Okay, I'm going to add more vinegar and reduce the heat a bit. I think I dipped a little fast, but, oops, let's add two, three tablespoons of vinegar. Um, I do think that I added the yarn a little faster than I had intended. I would have liked the, the top end to be pretty much just blue, but I'm really, really excited. This is something that is a little different uh, from some of the others that I've done, and there's definitely a lot of blue in there. So, yeah, we're seeing the breaking, but in a very different way. Eek, I'm so excited. Um, I'm now, I'm feeling that a lot of that just sucked up 
because I think that the, the blues are just probably going into the superwash, it's what it looks like, which is why we're seeing so much more red here than, say, the, like, a fuchsia, because we're not really getting any, any blue over, but, oh, this is gorgeous, yeah. All right, I'm going to leave this for 10 minutes, and then I'll come back and check in. After five minutes, the water has cleared, and we have absorbed all of the color onto our yarn. So, oh, we've got some whitish patch color, like from the being on the bottom. I'm going to turn off the heat, and we'll take a closer look. How's that for broken violet with a twist? We see our blues and purples and pinks, but the superwash yarn absorbed colors way faster. And the pinks struck fast as well, but we're not seeing very many blues at all in what I can only assume are the 100% wool plies. So now I want to let this cool completely so we can wash it. Let's wash our twisted blank. This looks so, so cool. I have dyed twisted yarns before, but the plies have always looked different before we started. And, you know, this water is completely clear. So all the color is in our yarn. But I have to say, there's something pretty fun with starting from basically nothing and just like a bare white yarn, and then ending up with this twist after we dye it. I am now going to add a little bit of soap. I'd really like to play around with this with a color that doesn't break um, and maybe do like some different hand painting techniques and play with it further. Even though this yarn is discontinued from wool to dye for, I do have um, I do have two more skeins of it that I bought from someone in the Chemnitz Lab Facebook group, which is a group for all fans of all things Chemnitz. Now, even if you can't buy this type of yarn, this is something that you could spin. You just need to make some plies that are super wash and some that are not super wash. But I think that this is just beautifully, beautifully done. And I'll try to put some more stats about the yarn I started with in the video description. But anyway, I'm now gonna hang this up to dry. We'll look at it dry and then unravel it. I haven't even unraveled this yet, and I am really, really excited. I, my best guess says that the darker, more saturated color along this whole blank is the super washed plies. Um, but yeah, I mean, I guess it would make sense that the non super wash would get some of that pink. Even though pink tends to strike pretty fast, it would strike fast to the wool as well. Whereas the blues with little acid and little thyme will start striking to that superwash yarn before they get a chance to strike to the 100% wool um, non-superwash part of this. Uh, this is something when I do a lot of dip dyeing with say Wool of the Andes, I'll need to add more vinegar to get those blues to absorb. But if at the vinegar concentration they're already absorbing to the superwash, well then that's what we're going to see. I am surprised by how red this is overall. But even with all that pink, you do see sort of dark purples throughout the whole thing. So while this might not look like the uh, broken violet colorways we are always used to seeing, I think that we've got something really fantastic. And again, we haven't unraveled it yet. So let's go see what the gradient looks like. Oh, this is so cool. There is some variation from where the stitches were placed, but it's really subtle and sort of gives a level of modeling on top of a twisted yarn that just gives us so much depth and dimension. And then on top of that, we just have this gradient. Oh my gosh, this is absolutely delightful. Recently, for a Dye Pot PS episode, I dyed some of my own hand spun. And I'm not necessarily sure if it's worth dyeing your hand spun versus dyeing the roving beforehand. But 
dot, spinning my own yarn like this with some superwash strand superwash plies and non superwash plies, that would a hundred percent be worth it. If I bring a skein of Wool of the Andes Broken Violet next to us, we see these reds and this character um, and the fuchsias, but again, it's this blue that is easier to capture on a non superwash yarn. And you see it a bit in the palest section, but zoomed out, you don't really feel it quite as much. Zoomed in, then you can start to appreciate some of those blues that are present here. Uh, as I said before, there is some subtle, subtle uh, modeling because of the blank, but I think that it's especially subtle because of the twist and the contrast between the different plies on this yarn is more extreme than the modeling we see. But I think that this is gonna knit up into something absolutely stunning. When I'm done filming this video, I'm gonna go wet this yarn so that way I can relax that crimp. I'm just gonna soak it a little bit and hang it up to dry, and that will help things from being as crimped. You guys, I cannot believe that Chemnitz is 10 years old. When I look back over the last decade of my adult life, we there's just so much that has happened. Chemnitz started while we were on a ski trip in, up in New Hampshire. I was home alone because I didn't want to go skiing and I decided to try to set up a blog so that way I could share the list of ear flap hat knitting patterns that I had assembled when I was wanting to make one for Keith. And look where we are today. Today, Chemnitz is a business. It's my job. We have merchandise. I mean, there's just so much going on now. And I would not be here without you and without this whole community. If you are a big fan of everything that I have been doing, don't forget to subscribe to the Chemnitz Tutorials YouTube channel. Uh, there are also a few other ways that you can support the Chemnitz business so I can keep buying more supplies, more yarn, and creating these really fun yarn dyeing videos. I have an Etsy shop, Chemnitz Creations, where I sell the yarn that I dyed in these videos. I also have a Patreon, which is a way that you can sort of subscribe and support on a recurring basis and get early access to new videos and behind the scenes sneak peeks. Um, there's some links to all of these things in the video description. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and thank you so much for watching this video, all the videos, and for being a part of this community. Thank you so much from the bottom of my heart. And I cannot wait to see where Chemnitz will be in another 10 years.